All right. I think, uh, let's see here. I think Rosa, we are set if you wanted to um, to get started. You just let me know if um, when you want me to put on the agenda slide. Okay, sounds good. Um, I didn't know if, um, should, I just, should I just go ahead and get started then? Yeah, why don't we get, why don't we get going? We'll do it. So we'll just uh, turn my video on here to say hello. Oh, okay. Uh, my video is not able to get started, but that's all right. So thank you all for joining us today for an introduction to Crossref. So in this session, um, we're going to cover the basics of Crossref, including who we are and what we do. We'll discuss the value and the use of metadata for content discovery and our global equity membership program. We're also going to cover the process of setting up independent membership and the title transfer process. We'll introduce you to some additional services that we offer to our members. And then we're going to end with a Q&A session to address any questions that you may have. Now, if you have any questions, we ask if you could please put them in the Q&A box um, versus in the chat. That way it's easier for us to keep track of them and then others can also see your questions and then the answers to those questions. Um, again, as Susan has said before, if you're just joining, uh, feel free to tell us where you're joining us from in the chat. And last bit here would be that the webinars, we are recording it, and we will share the recording uh, in the slides by email within the next few days. Now, a little bit about us. So let me introduce you to the team that is going to be speaking with you today. I am Rosa Maurice Clark, Communications and Events Manager. We have Susan Collins, our Community Engagement Manager and Sponsor Program Manager. We have Johansson Obanda, also a Community Engagement Manager, and Robika Rosaline, from, uh, she's our Member Support uh, Specialist. And we're here today to help you understand Crossref and answer any questions that you have. This is our mission statement. Crossref makes research outputs easy to find, cite, link, assess, and reuse. We're a not-for-profit membership organization that exists to make scholarly communications better. It is as simple and as complicated as that. We have a distributed team of 43 staff located in the US, UK, Europe, Kenya, and Indonesia. And this includes our membership team, finance, research and development, technical support, product management, and the team that's with you today is from our community engagement team. Now, Crossref is a membership organization, and membership is open to organizations that uh, produce professional and scholarly materials and content. We work with a diverse group of over 20,000 members and affiliated organizations from 150 countries, um, approximately 150 countries. Our members include research institutions, commercial publishers, universities, libraries, funders, et cetera. So to date, our members have registered metadata for over 144 million content items with us. And this includes journal articles, books and chapters, reports, standards and grants, just to name a few. And we offer a wide array of services to ensure that the scholarly research metadata is registered, linked, and distributed. So when members register their content with us, they assign it a DOI, Digital Object Identifier and we collect the metadata about that piece of content. We process the metadata so that connections can be made between publications, people, organizations, and other associated outputs. And then we preserve the metadata that we receive for the scholarly record, and we make it openly available across a range of interfaces and formats so that the community can use it and build tools with it. Okay, and why, why do organizations decide to join Crossref? Well, the primary reason is to become part of a global connected network of scholarly research. This allows them to show people where their content is located and update that information with persistent identifiers when the content moves. Now, by creating a persistent identifier for each object, it enhances this, the discoverability of their publications through robust metadata, making their content more likely to be found. Crossref membership also offers benefits such as the ability to determine who is using their content and the opportunity to participate in collaborative services. Furthermore, the metadata provided by our members powers a variety of additional services that we've developed at Crossref benefiting both our members and the wider 
um, academic community. So you know, there are numerous compelling reasons to join and become part of our community. So with that, I am going to hand it over to Susan, who will talk to you about the value and the use of metadata. Susan? Thanks, Rosa. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so you've just heard Rosa talk about uh, the benefits of joining Crossref, and we heard that one of the benefits of joining is to improve the discoverability of publications and research. So how exactly does this happen? Well, it happens with the metadata that's sent to us when members register their content. So content registration allows the members to register a DOI for an item and then deposit its associated metadata. So when you join Crossref as a member, you're issued a DOI prefix. And this is combined with a uh, user created suffix to form the DOI. And the DOI is just one piece of metadata that's sent to us. Uh, members maintain an um, for example, telling us if the content moves to a new website or they wish to include more information um, as it becomes available. And so this means there's a growing chance that content is found, cited, linked to, included in assessment, and can be used by other researchers. So when registering content, members supply us with a wide range of metadata. So basic metadata includes things like titles and authors, publication dates, ISSN, ISBN, um, anything that describes the content that you're registering. So we also collect additional data about items being registered. And this can include things like reference lists, funding data, ORCID and ROAR IDs, license data, um, information about errata, retractions, and updates can be registered through our Crossmark service. And the metadata that is sent is gonna vary based on the type of content that's being registered. So we ask that you send us as much metadata as possible and that it be accurate and clean. So the more comprehensive your metadata is, the more likely your content will be discovered. However, this is only true if the metadata is accurate. So don't worry about including information that you're really not sure about. Records can always be updated at any time. And we strongly encourage you to do that whenever you find more information is available to add to your records. So why is registering comprehensive metadata so important? Well, it's because there's a lot of organizations and researchers that use that metadata to find the content that you publish. And because Crossref's metadata is standardized and machine readable, it's quite useful to many organizations that create tools and services using that metadata. And these can include author profiling tools, manuscript tracking systems, library discovering, discovery services, uh, metrics providers. So we receive over 600 million metadata queries per month across all of our search interfaces. So what does metadata do? It actually does quite a lot of things. And I'm going to talk about four things here that metadata enables. So we've heard about discoverability. The more metadata you include about a piece of content, the easier it is for others to search and discover. Um, a few examples of how. So our, our books metadata project um, had shown that books with basic metadata are more likely to come up in searches in Google Scholar. And journal articles with deposited references seem to be cited more often than those without. Um, reproducibility is also um, a critical use of metadata. Researchers need to be able to build upon each other's works. So verifying and reproducing the results from early works is helped by uh, metadata like uh, linking to funding or protocols or research data. Um, these all help to create a complete picture of a work. Um, third, uh, metadata also helps determine the integrity of the research, who funded the project, where are the affiliations of the authors, and could there be conflicts of interest. And then fourth, reporting and assessment um, can be carried out by a variety of organizations like universities and funders um, in order to show, for example, the accountability and benefits of public investment, uh, benchmarking information, compliance with funder mandates, um, all of things like this help help with reporting and assessment of research. So next up, I want to talk about our Global Equitable Membership, or GEM program. So um, over the years, we've had, we've heard from various communities about some of the challenges they face when looking to join Crossref. Um, so the reasons might differ by region, but generally they're a combination of financial, language, and technical challenges. Uh, but we know that for some, cost is probably the largest barrier to joining. And so our GEM program was created to help lower this barrier. 
So in the past, we had a limited fee assistance program that waived the content registration fees for members working under specific partner arrangements. Now, some of you worked through the INASP uh, Nepal Journal Online program, which was part of that fee assistance programs. Um, but we learned that the programs were fairly limited in scope. And so learning from these experiences and partnerships, we expanded the program to provide greater membership equitability and accessibility to organizations located in some of the least economically advantaged countries. And so the new program now encompasses the annual fee as well as the content registration fees. So eligibility for the program is based on a member's country. And our list of countries is based on the World Bank's International Development Association or IDA list, which uses uh, World Bank income classifications, but also applies um, additional criteria for economic health, like GNI per capita and credit worthiness. So we reviewed the program with the World Bank, who is also a CrossF member, and they also prioritized the IDA countries and their own strategies for access and additional support. So the program will go and um, will undergo an annual review. Countries may be added or removed over time as economic situations change. Um, so the program was launched in January of this year, and we already had close to 200 existing members who became eligible for the program. And then since January, we've welcomed 50 new additional members that were able to join um, through the program. Um, and so we, we hope as time goes on and more folks become familiar with the program that they'll be able to take advantage um, of it and join us as well. So the GEM program covers the annual member fee and the content registration fees for all content types. It does not cover our similarity check uh, program or metadata plus. Um, GEM eligible members are able to add these additional services to their accounts. However, there is a fee associated with them. So Similarity Check um, is a program that we run in partnership with Turnitin. Members pay um, an annual administrative fee, which um, for folks here would be $55, um, as well as document checking fees. Now for all members, we waive the fee for the first 100 documents that are checked. And then after that fee, it's 75 cents per document. Um, and then um, talking about Metadata Plus, um, all of our metadata is freely available with our search tools and API, um, but there is a fee for our pre premium Metadata Plus service, um, which offers combined machine access to all available metadata in XML and JSON formats uh, with some additional features. But for most folks, um, our free APIs are, um, are more than enough to be able to search for metadata. Okay, so some of you are here today you're already CrossF members. Some of you may be CrossF members through the existing Nepal Journal Online account, but for anybody who wants to join independently um, or that is not a member at all, we're gonna talk about the process of getting started. Um, so you can see on the page here um, is the link to our membership application. So that's the first step is to complete, uh, complete the application. And it's gonna ask you, for such things as the name of your organization um, and your organization's uh, website, as well as the publication um, where your publications are located, um, and also your mailing address. Um, we also ask you to send us um, names and emails for different contact, contact folks um, on the account, a primary, um, a technical contact, and a metadata quality contact, um, if, that's, if it's available. So part of the application also contains confirmation that you've read a summary of your obligations as a member. Um, if you register content through an existing account, but wish to have an independent account, you'll still need to complete the application. And there's a section on the application to indicate um, the current prefix that you use to register content. Okay, so once we receive um, and approve your application, you'll receive a welcome email from our membership team. And this will include your prefix that you're gonna to use to create your DOIs, um, your CrossF login and instructions how to create a password, and then links to access some of the different content registration tools, as well as other information about, uh, about getting started. Um, and you'll get follow on emails um, from our membership team over time um, about different topics um, to participate in additional services, voting information, and just information to help you along your journey with Crossref. So there are a lot of types of contents that you can register with us. And so most people know um, that DOIs are used for journal articles, 
but we accept all types of content that you see listed here. And each type has a unique set of metadata um, and format in our schema. So members don't need to let us know if you are adding a new type of content or a new title. You can use the same prefix um, for all content types. Okay, so next I wanna talk about um, what happens if you are already working through an existing account, but you want, to, um, you want to sign up for independent membership. So if you're already registering content through an existing account, like Nepal Journals Online, for example, but you wanna start your own account, you're still gonna to need to complete the membership application that I mentioned um, earlier, and you'll be given a new prefix. But because your journal title is associated with the previous prefix, the title's going to need to be transferred to the new account. Um, it's also really important that we need um, permission from existing owners to transfer the title to the new prefix and new account. And we need to have that permission for this before we process the application. So once this once permission has been um, settled um, and you've completed uh, your setup for as a new publisher, you're not going to change any DOIs that have already been assigned. Um, you're only going to change the metadata, for example, if, if your content changed URLs, you can update the URLs. So as a new publisher, you're then responsible for maintaining the old content, and then you can start registering new content. And you'll, new, you'll uh, use your new prefix to register content after the transfer. And our technical team can help you um, with the title transfer or any questions about updating your metadata. Okay, so there's a few ways that Crosswalk members send, um, send us their metadata and register their content with us. So all metadata that's been registered with Crosswalk is held in our system as XML. Uh, members can choose to register their content with us by sending us XML files directly, or if you aren't able to do that, we do have some helper tools available. And these helper tools collect the metadata and turn it into XML behind the scenes. Um, so our web deposit form is one example of a helper tool. Um, and for members who host their content on the OJS platform from PKP, there's a Crossref plugin available to help you add in your metadata and then register it with us. So I'm gonna take a quick look at the web deposit form and OJS. So this is the page, our web deposit form. You can see the, um, the URL up there where the form is located. Um, so the manual entry form, it's very basic. You enter your data field by field and it writes and submits the XML for processing. Um, you may use this form for journal and book content, dissertations, conference proceedings, and reports. And you don't need to know XML to use the form. You just type in the information straight in. It is more limited in what it collects compared to what you can send by XML, but it's a lot more simple. Um, one thing to note is that you can't deposit your references using the web deposit form. But once you complete your deposit using the form, you can use our simple text query tool to register your references. And there's information about that on the page. Next up, OJS. Because so many members use OJS um, to publish their content, a few years back, Crosswalk and PKP began a collaboration to create a less technical method for OJS users to register metadata um, with us um, and help publishers and journals take advantage of Crosswalk services. So to send us the metadata of your content, there are two steps. First, you'll need to enable the DOI plugin, which is the first um, bullet point here. Um, and that's the pathway in OJS to find that plugin. So uh, once you uh, enable that, you'll choose the content that you want DOIs to be assigned to, such as journal articles. You're gonna enter the prefix that was sent to you in your membership email, and then you'll choose a suffix pattern um, in that part of the plugin. And then the, the second step is to enable the Crossref specific plugin. And here you'll enter the name and email of the depositor, um, that's going to be registering the content, and then the username and password um, provided to you by Crossref with your membership confirmation. And you can find the Crossref plugin um, from your dashboard um, using the pathway there that you see starting in the tools section of, of OJS. Okay, now I'm going to pass over to my colleague Abanda, who's going to talk about the different services that are available to Crossref members. Abanda? Thank you so much. Susan, great. Um, my name is Johansson, and I'm going to talk to you more about services available to you as a member. Um, in addition to registering content or to registering metadata. 
And uh, as you can see this, we have uh, four additional services that are available to you as a member. And these will help to increase your content's discoverability and improve metadata quality. And I will give you a brief overview of each service. The first one is the reference linking, which makes it possible for readers to follow a DOI link from the reference list of a published work to the location of the full text document on a member's publishing platform, thereby building a network infrastructure that enhances scholarly communication on the web. Reference linking means including cross DOIs display, which, which are displayed as URL basically when you create your citation list. This enables researchers to follow a link from a reference list to the other full text documents and it helps them to make connections and discover new things. And because it's a DOI rather than just a link, it will remain persistent. I'll go to the next service, which is a cited by. And uh, researchers, because uh, researchers cite the work of other people to support the material they have used when writing their articles. And so cited by, it helps to um, it helps to be able to see which articles are citing an article that you are reading and how the researchers continue to develop their ideas. This is the main function of cited by. It shows the number of citations and link to the publications that cite the article. Cited by also allows members to show authors and readers that other course of content has cited their content. And members may request this information from Crossref and they display it on their website in whatever format that they like. The next uh, service is a similarity check. And our similarity check service, it helps Crossref members prevent scholarly and professional plagiarism by providing immediate feedback regarding a manuscript similarity to other published academic and general web content through reduced rate access to the authenticated text comparison software from Tanitin. And uh, like Susan said, this service does not have, uh, this service has additional fees and, um, and, and, this is not, and these fees are not covered by the GEM program. The last uh, service that I'm going to talk about right now is a cross mark, um, which is, a button that gives readers quick and easy access to the current status of an item of content, including any corrections, retractions, or updates to that record. So, because research doesn't stand still, and even after publication, articles can be updated with supplementary data or corrections. So it's important to know if that content being cited has been updated, corrected, or retracted. And CrossMe, Crossmark makes this information more visible to readers. With one click, you can see if content has changed and access valuable additional metadata provided by the members, such as key publication dates of the submission or revision or acceptance. Also, plagiarism screening status and information about licenses, handling editors, and peer review. Crossmark lets readers know when a, sub, a substantial change affecting the citation or interpretation has occurred and that the member has updated their meta, data record to reflect the new status. I'm gonna hand it back to Susan from here. Thank you, Obanda. Um, that's a quick overview of, of Crossref. Um, we hope that you found the information valuable. I do want to wrap up by saying um, that with our GEM program, we hope that Crossref membership is more accessible to organizations that wish to become members. Um, you know, the value of Crossref comes from our members in the metadata that they register. It creates a rich and reusable open network of relationships that connect organizations, people, things um, designed to be used by the global community. So building this network for the global community really must include input from all of the global community. So I hope that you're, you're able to join us there. Um, I wanted to share, finally, um, if you need any further help and information, there, we always have our uh, support documentation available. Um, if you have a specific technical question, you can email our support team. 
um, and we'll get back to you there. We also encourage you to check out a community forum um, where you can post questions to the group. Um, you can post in English or in any other language. Um, and then we, we um, let's see here. Uh, we do have um, a page about upcoming webinars um, and you can also find recordings from previous events if you're interested. So I am gonna stop sharing my screen and we are going to be able to um, answer any questions that you might have now. You can put them in the Q&A box. Um, our CrossRef ambassador, um, Minyak, is with us today. Minyak, I don't know if you wanted to say any words um, at the end of this now. Yeah, thank you, Susan. So um, uh, I hope uh, everyone uh, today uh, got the information. So actually, uh, you need to learn about JAM program. So uh, if there are, are, are any confusion, then you can directly uh, search about JAM program and Crossref. So what actually uh, it do is it give uh, all the journals in Nepal and other countries, as mentioned by Suzanne, uh, a free Crossref membership for the journal. So uh, since our journal, Nepal Journal of Biotechnology, has also migrated, uh, like, to an independent Crossref uh, membership. So you can also take an independent Crossref membership as well. Uh, so uh, nowadays, I guess uh, every uh, EIC know that uh, NEPJO project is uh, ending, actually, like uh, it's being managed by Tripurban University uh, currently. Uh, so it's providing the DUI for you. So if you want to take the DUI directly, you can do that and uh, you can display you are a member of the Crossref in your journal as well. So I encourage all the journals and uh, like EICs to take the GEM program to participate in GEM program. And uh, since the program has been launched recently, so it's a huge relief for journals here in Nepal uh, to get um, the free Crossref membership. Else we have to pay a uh, certain amount. So uh, I guess like uh, uh, last year uh, like uh, i think many of uh, us has has also paid or uh, uh, like around 275 uh, us dollar per year i guess so uh, and even like content registration you need to pay separately so uh, but in the gym program you don't need to pay uh, your content registration and you don't need to pay your membership so uh, if there are any confusion then you can uh, directly uh, email the Crossref team, uh, or um, you can also communicate uh, through email. Uh, so uh, I hope everyone uh, like uh, uh, like has uh, like got what uh, like today's more programs motive was. So uh, that's all, Susan. So if there are any questions, like uh, we would entertain that. Um, I see a couple of questions. Thanks, Vinyak. Yes, that was that is correct. Your annual fee and the uh, membership fees would be waived um, through our gym program for um, any organization in Nepal. Um, so uh, there's a question up here from Dr. Nabar. I, I uh, New Pain. I hope I'm correct uh, pronouncing that correctly. Um, uh, if your journal, if you're working through the Nepal Journal Online, um, if you wish to have your own in in your in through the the NEPJAL program, you are, your content is being registered through Crossref as part of that program. Um, if you wanted to join independently, have your own prefix um, and register your content that way, you can do so, and that is covered um, by the GEM program. Um, if you wish to to transfer to an independent account. Um, members are able to um, to uh, to 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 join independently if you wish. It's it's up to you um, of whether or not that's something that you you would find beneficial. Um, OJS is it's another question: Is OJS compulsory for the gem program? It is not. Um, 
the you can choose to register your content um, any number of ways. Um, and OJS is not required at all. You could use you could use OJS. You could also use our web deposit form. Um, you could also um, register sending XML files directly to us. So all of those are optional um, as far as how you want to send us your metadata. Um, we did have another question about Crossmark. Um, Crossmark is, as, as Abana mentioned, um, a way to provide additional metadata um, visually to um, folks looking at your content and also to give an, a status update if the current if the uh, information is current or if it's um, if it's had an update or a retraction. It is probably the most technical uh, technically challenging service that we have. Um, there is a lot that kind of goes into it. Um, be, behind that that setup is kind of required before. Um, but if that's something that you're interested in, um, you can drop us an email and we can definitely help to walk you through that, um, that process. Let's see here. Let's see. Um, I tried to join. Okay, we have another question from, um, is membership free of cost? Yes. If you are an organization based in Nepal and you wanted to become a member, yes. You, it is part of the GEM program. There is no annual fee. There's no content registration fees um, as part of that program. Um, another Dr. Lava Shrestha has asked a question. Can you change the website address once you register your content? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, you can update any metadata that has previously been registered. And um, what you, for an, a URL update, you don't have to redeposit all of your metadata. You can send us a list of your DOIs and the new URL for that. And our support staff can update that for you directly. You don't have to redeposit all of, all of the metadata. Um, another question here, um, I tried to join Crossref uh, three or four months ago, but I didn't get a response. Um, if you, yes, you may join Crossref now independently. Um, I don't know if there was a problem receiving your application, but um, you are welcome to, to reapply and we can, um, we can get that going. If you've had, if you are unsure about it, you can email us, um, I can put it in the chat here. It's member at crossref.org. Um, and we can uh, we can look up and see if you are, um, uh, if we have your application. Um, we have another question, how long can we expect the GEM program to go on? Well, as I mentioned, the, um, the list of countries that are eligible for the GEM program is based on the IDA list. And so if the World Bank um, updates the list and Nepal economic situations change and they're no longer on the program, um, part of the IDA program, um, then they would not be included in the GEM program any longer, um, but we wouldn't immediately start charging fees. There would be some kind of grace period before that has happened. Um, it is still new and I don't, I don't know how often um, countries come and go off of the list, so um, we will we'll be checking the list over time just to um, ensure that uh, we are current with that. Um, Dr. Lava again asked a question, um, currently getting DOIs from Nepal journals. If we wanna register as an independent organization, do we need clearance from Nepal journals? Yes, you do need that. Um, they will need to just uh, give permission to transfer the title from the Nepal Journal program to your new account. Um, and uh, you can ask them to send us an email when you're when you're ready to to transition to an independent account. Um, you can have uh, a representative from the Nepal Journal online program email our membership team and let them know that they are uh, they are granting permission to transfer that title out of their program. Let's see here. All right, good questions. Um, and if anyone does have additional um, questions, you can email us either at um, 
feedback at crossref.org or a member at crossref.org. Um, Dr. Lava had a question. Can we register previously published contents? Yes, you can. Um, it can, uh, there's no um, limit on how far back you can go. Uh, an article published online in 1998, as you mentioned, absolutely, you can register that with us. Um, the process for doing so is the same as current content. Um, there's no uh, different, um, different procedure. For, for Now, if you weren't in the GEM program, I would say um, for folks who are non-GEM countries, previously published content does have a reduced fee for, um, for registering content, uh, back file content. But um, for the GEM program, uh, all content registration is included. Um, we had another question um, about emailing the information. Yes, we'll be emailing you um, the slides as well as the recording from today um, so that you have time to review that and you'll have all of the links on the slides as well um, so that if you had questions, um, you could follow up um, with any of that information. Great. We have any other questions today? I do want to thank all of you for joining us. I hope that you found it uh, useful and helpful um, and uh, information to consider about uh, whether you want to join or not. Um, and um, yeah. Um, we had a question, and Vinyak may be able to answer this a little better. Is it official that the Nepal Journal Online program is actually coming to an end? Um, I know in, in our system, it's a little bit of a different answer, but I don't know, Vinyak, you had a, a few knew more about where that stands from your point? Yeah, actually, like NIPJOL program was under JOL program. So, um, so JOL program has like, uh, it's not much active nowadays. So it all depends on Tibetan University Central Library now. So the uh, so future uh, like may not be secure. Uh, like if you see after 10 years, 15 years, who will sponsor? And like uh, what will be the fate of the journal? Obviously, like you will, uh, Tibetan University will handle uh, these kind of things. But uh, it's better like if you uh, want to be an independent journal, having a Crossref membership. So it's better to enroll in the program uh, when uh, the Crossref is offering the GEM uh, program. Like, I guess uh, it's launched uh, two months back, I guess, yeah. Right, uh, yes. So it's, it's it's better, like, uh, you take this opportunity and uh, you migrate, you create your own independent, you can create your own independent website and then you can uh, migrate to your DOI as well. So you'll be in charge of uh, registr uh, registering your uh, content. So you can register as much as you like. So uh, it's a better you take the opportunity now, uh, like rather to wait uh, for, for the future, like uh, uncertain future. So I suggest to um, uh, like better migrate. Uh, we have the, we migrated, our journal has migrated. So it's better you all migrate. Hey, thanks, Vinyak. That was very helpful. Let's see. All right. Is there any other questions today? Um, and if you, again, if you do think of any um, after, after we're done, please feel free to get in contact with us and we'll be more than happy to help you out with anything that you have. Okay. Well, I will, we will wrap up then. Um, with uh, thanking you all for joining us. And we'll be getting the slides and the recording out to you um, sometime this week. Um, and um, yeah. So awesome. anyone thank you. Have, yeah. And thank you, Vinyak, for, for helping to organize this and um, sharing the information in, um, in the different communities in Nepal. So we're very excited that um, uh, to have the program to just facilitate membership from sort of more of the global community, and help help join us. So. Absolutely. Uh, 
Uh, one last question, Dr. Lakshmi. Uh, we we expect other details and services. Um, yes, we will. And um, once you're a member of Crossref, we will definitely send you out uh, additional information about uh, getting started and what you can expect as for being a member. Great. Well, thank you all, and um, we will um, share out the information soon. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.